Coming up, Vostid has a new knife called the Chipmunk. I'm sure to hate that one. Uh, I get a whole bunch of Victorinox knives and go very deep into that. And a bevy of badass blades. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. I had a couple of favorite comments over the past few weeks since we've had a few weeks off here. Uh, first one from Craig Vincent, a familiar name. He says, thanks, Bob. I enjoyed that. Now, he was talking about my part seven of my full knife collection. That is slip joints that are below the, the high end. So we're talking case, rough rider, etc. He says, thanks, Bob. I enjoyed that. The only knives I have in common with this installment is the 110 and the Culpepper. But I must say that now I am inspired to dabble in traditionals. Great job. You know, that makes me feel great. That warms the cockles of my heart because, uh, you know, we all like to share our, our obsession. Uh, but it's very rare that we can ever change anyone's mind or get people to think a different way. So, um Though this might not be the most important way to change how someone thinks, Craig Vincent, I'm so thrilled to hear that you're going to start dabbling. Uh, if you want advice on what to dabble in, let me know. I'm all over the place. All right. Uh, Jason Scott had my second uh, favorite comment. Jason Scott, 6906, on my Hogtooth Matt Chase interview. He says, hey, Bob, I've been watching your channel for a few years now and somehow missed this interview. And since you've been showing your collection with Hogtooth, I've been eyeing uh, I've been keeping an eye on his website. I really like his EDC Tonto, which I personally cannot recommend any higher. Uh, and I can't wait to see your second collaboration with Matt. Uh, Matt makes amazing looking knives. All right. So uh, this is sort of a continuation of that first comment. Yes, it's so nice to expose people uh, to makers that I've discovered. This guy, for instance, Matt Chase, who's become a friend of mine and uh, just an incredible maker. He was introduced to me through my old buddy drew who served with him in the marine corps and discovered him uh, years after serving with him on instagram bob check this guy out so that's how this happens it's word of mouth speaking of word of mouth uh, you might want to tell people about this podcast that's a great way to help the show is just to get this in the ears of other people and uh, they can download it you can download it to your favorite podcast app listed right here on the screen all, all your favorites and uh, listen whilst on the go all right all that being said i think it's now time for a pocket check. Today in my front right pocket, I had the gorgeous and Reich knife produced Microtech SOCOM Bravo. Uh, the SOCOM series has is, is an old time favorite for uh, Microtech. Everyone loves them, a SOCOM. And they were making these Bravos in-house. The Bravo is a sort of special version, sort of customized, limited edition version, not so good with the left hand on this one, uh, version of the SOCOM Bravo, I mean, of the SOCOM. And they took this very specialized production and brought it overseas to Reich Knife. Now, Reich Knife is known for their... Um, uh, very, very precise engineering. They're very sculptural uh, knife builds. And uh, those things going together were the sort of perfect combination uh, for this knife because the SOCOM Bravo has always had a very sculptural element to it. Look at that blade. Look at the handle. Um, always a bolster and uh, different different uh, surfaces and terraces, etc. Look at all that jimping on the back. Uh, this knife, I don't carry as much as I should. I lusted after it. it. took me a long time to get it. It's one of those things, you know, you you go for it. And you can't wait till you get it. Then you get it and you don't carry it that much. Uh, I have never actually gone in and stretched out that very robust pocket clip, which is also extremely tight. I think that has something to do with it. Oh, Bob. Uh, the edge on this is extremely sharp and very... Um, kind of wedge-like in a sense, but like many microtechs, it's not uh, the geometry behind the edge isn't what we would expect to be slicey, but they're just wickedly sharp. So anyway, had that on me, a great little piece of, uh, of modern industrial art knife stuff. All right, next up, I had the beautiful green duties dagger slip in my pocket. 
Uh, check out Duty's Daggers online on Instagram and YouTube. He does a lot of great uh, reviews, but also makes these beautiful slips. And he made that one for this Ohio River Jack. The beautiful C. Reisner Cutlery knife. Uh, that's why I put CRC in the lower third. C. Reisner Cutlery. Just a little long, especially with Ohio River Jack. So uh, beautiful Warren Cliff blade, straight edge, super sharp M390 blade steel on a very robust frame. Great walk and talk. You've got the uh, sort of new style slip joint with the stop pin down there. Instead of using the kick height against the back spring to determine where the blade stops, a lot of modern slip joints use that stop pin. Uh, this knife comes in a sheep's foot, which has a less pointy tip, and also a spear point. Uh, and then it comes in two different double-bladed models, which are very cool. Extremely thick, but very cool. Um, definitely a go-to sort of um, hard-use knife if you're willing to carry something on the pouch is that double-bladed knife. And I say that because that M390 blade steel it takes a long time to dull. Excuse me, and if you've got two blades, it's going to take a lot of time for those to dull. Throw that in the pouch on the pocket. Go to the work site. You might be the fanciest guy there, but you'll have a, a double-bladed M390 knife that'll just uh, take you to the finish line. All right, next up, speaking of hogtooth knives, I had my most, well, it's not my most beloved hogtooth, but they're all beloved. I love this thing, uh, if you didn't guess. Uh, this is the Hogtooth Ruffian. I got this for my 51st birthday, I believe, uh, on my visit to um, Hogtooth Knives uh, to Matt's um, uh, shop. There were a couple of these in process. I picked out my liners, picked out my, my G10, waited a little while and got it. Not G10, uh, Micarta. Uh, this is um, one of my all-time favorite everyday carry fixed blades and definitely one of my biggest at nearly five inches uh, on the blade. But you have a nice uh, rounded off, rounded in sort of all aspects handle that makes it very comfortable to carry. And then you have those uh, alternating divots that make it great in hand. And then here you have a harpoon swedge <clears throat> and jimping. It just locks in the hand. It's a deep hollow grind, so it's very slicey it's not too deep actually but it's a hollow grind very slicey high relief edge here just a nasty uh very very useful cutter and um since i have moved to appendix carry most everything i carry i carry appendix i still don't carry this one appendix it's still a little chunky and a little long for that kind of carry for me it, you know like if you want to bend over it starts poking into places uh but <clears throat> an outstanding knife. I love this knife. Um, I want another one, but why should I? Uh, <laughs> uh, I why, do, why do you want another one, Bob? I, I just want a different handle. I'd love to see this with a stag handle. I know it would cost a pretty penny, but uh, love it. And, and uh, I would love to have an everyday carry knife uh, with a stag handle, too. So very nice knife. That's the Ruffian by Hog Tooth Knives. And then lastly, for emotional support, it's been really hard kicking this out of the pocket, the back left pocket, as a matter of fact, next to the bandana. This is the Jack Wolf Knives After Hour Jack, the uh, uh, frame lock um, front flipping version of the Midnight Jack. The Midnight Jack with its coffin handle and its beautiful, um, it looks like a locomotive to me, an Art Deco locomotive coming into the future uh but anyway that that uh, really deeply hollow ground uh sheep foot blade and coffin handle made this a very popular slip joint and so he uh made it a little bit larger and turned it into a fantastic um titanium flipper now i i keep failing it middle finger flipping it that way with my left hand but you get the idea uh i have not found this if I had one ding, I would say I'd need it a little bit more uh, up front on that front flipper because I'm an old man and my front flipping skills are not the same as these young bucks coming up. And uh, so, I mean, I can I can do it. It's just not as uh, it doesn't come as readily as the gunslinger, his last front flipper. All right. Look at this incredible lineup. I'm a very fortunate person here. Uh, two of these. 
well no one of them i got for free the others uh two of them have, uh, one of them's made by a friend i'm getting to know this guy he's awesome and i just love mike check i'm a very fortunate person i recognize that uh, this is my pocket check for today my very uh spoiled western pocket check i don't mean spoiled like i feel guilty i just mean geez i'm feeling a little humble right now i'm lucky to have these knives especially for a guy who doesn't really use them so much he just sort of obsesses over their quality and their build uh okay so this coming up uh january january 18th we're gonna be giving away uh, speaking of knives oh are we speaking of knives we'll be giving away our gentleman junkie knife giveaway knife for the month of january I haven't figured out what it'll be i have a feeling it will be a uh, a um, it'll either be a petrified fish package meaning a couple of petrified fishes or uh maybe a civivi or we we will see uh, but that is coming up. Uh, if you're interested in helping support the show, you can do that on Patreon. Go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon, and you can see all of our, our three different tiers of support. Helps the show. Um, gives you bragging rights. Yes, I, I'm a patron of the arts, yes. Oh, and who do you patronize? Oh, uh, the Knife Junkie. You may have heard of him. Uh, that kind of conversation could happen at a cocktail party, and you would feel, well, you know, high levels of self-esteem so really it's a it's a uh it's a it's an esteem thing so uh the knife junkie.com slash patreon and uh, check it out that's the knife junkie.com slash patreon among this week's specials at knives ship free the bark river knives iron river in magna cut stainless steel has a comfortable curve to the handle and a drop point blade with plenty of cutting belly the Castrum No. 10 SFK Oak Swedish Forest Knife is in stock with oak handles and a Scandi Ground Sleipner blade. Order now and receive a free waterproof fire steel. And from Benchmade, the Dark Olive Meat Crafter. Designed for the campsite and the backyard grill, the Meat Crafter has an upswept CPM 154 blade with a keen 14-degree edge. It's now available with a grippy Dark Olive Santaprene handle. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, thenifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. Thenifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. First, they came out with a very oddly named raccoon. Now Vosteed has the chipmunk. Uh, the chipmunk is the first Vosteed drop of the year. And I have to say, uh, joking aside about the name, I think it's beautiful. It's got a clip point blade. No one's calling it that. They're calling it a drop point. But if you look at it, you see the swedge in the clip. It's got a clip point blade of 14C28N and a G10 handle. That blade is only 2.64 inches long. So this would be the kind you'd get because you love small knives. Uh, it opens in three ways. You got a thumb stud. You've got an inline flipper. That's one of those tiny little uh, regular front flipper or uh, regular four finger flippers. Uh, that's kind of in line with the rest of the thing. And then you've got a front flipper. So three ways to open it, uh, which is part of their unique selling proposition, which is not so unique anymore, especially with Vosteed. Everything they have opens up in multiple ways. But uh, what I think is cool about this knife is the design. I think the blade is beautiful. And I think the uh, very classic, uh, it reminds me of, um, actually reminds me of the CRKT Drifter a little bit, a knife I always thought was pretty handsome. And uh, also reminds me of the um, Combative Edge uh, M1 with that with that blade shape and that tip. And I, I just like it. I, I hope this is a success. I also hope that it is a precursor to an XL because this this would be one I would get. I have a I have one Vosteed left in the collection. Um, <clears throat> I've had a few come through. They're great knives. They also are great gift knives because they're super high quality. Don't necessarily break the bank, and you're you're getting someone a, a very high quality knife when you get it for them. Love the clean design. This thing is available now, and it's called the Vosteed Chipmunk. Up front, I said I will hate it because I hate chipmunks. I used to think they were cute. Now I just think they're tiny little furry devils. Next up, K-Bar has their new Eck folder. We all know John Eck. Maybe we know the Eck line of knives, very famous line of fixed blade knives uh, that were made popular in World War II. They kind of help solidify that uh, combat classic look, the sort of uh, buoy look, uh, buoy utility 
knife, uh, full tang. They were always full tang knives, the Eck knives. So here, uh, K-Bar, well, who now owns the Eck brand and puts out those knives, is now creating a folder here, the John Eck Custom Folder or Eck Folder. Uh, so this is a four inch, it's a pretty large one, four inch bladed S35VN knife. The I gotta say that handle for such an American company. I mean, the, the blade itself looks kind of like a Quaken. It's a little Japanese looking. I don't know about that. Might wanna throw a swedge on it, people. Uh, but anyway, it is a uh, sort of a Quaken style blade on a flipper, has an oddly protruding upward tang. Uh, to me, that's just signs of someone who doesn't design folders very much. Uh, I don't think it's a deal breaker in, in any way. Could, could act as a thumb rest, but just looks awkward uh, from an engineering standpoint. Has a handle that is very, very reminiscent of the Eck uh, combat knives. Uh, very straight, neutral. It's got the terracing uh, in lieu of um, uh, contouring. And then it's got those big, three big um, Phillips head sort of things, um, pins, if you will. So really looks like an Eck all day long. Um, I, I don't know. I, I got to say, I'm not impressed. I, I love the John, I love the Eck knives, the battle knives. I think they're so cool. I think this is an opportunity that is missed. Uh, I, I like the handle fine enough. I don't like the blade. I do not like the blade. If you're going to make it a non buoy style, non clip point blade for this very American flipper, um, I would go with a drop point, make it look like a bayonet, like a bayonet ground, uh, something good for piercing. Doesn't have to be a quaking, doesn't have to be a Japanese uh, blade here. Um, but anyway, I don't know. It just. Uh, 3.2 uh, ounces, so it'll be nice and light. This thing is available now. Um, and I'm looking forward to some newer blades, some different blades on the same handle. All right, last up in Knife Life news is Hinderer XM Auto. I love this XM18 Auto, especially now that they're going to be offering it in an aluminum handle. And you can save about 250 bucks by getting it in aluminum. Um <clears throat> So uh, let's see, in, nine, in 20, that shows how old I am. In 2020, uh, Ohio knife laws changed and they were now a lot, uh, allowed, thanks to knife rights, to have automatic knives uh, made, manufactured, sold, owned, etc. in Ohio. So Rick Hinderer jumped on the opportunity to turn his stalwart XM18 design into uh a titanium framed automatic push button automatic it was gorgeous kind of came and went very quickly it was more of a proof of concept or sort of a thumbing the nose at the government of ohio kind of thing but now they're coming out with a more um serious attempt at production of the automatic xm18 with an aluminum handle which makes it lighter cheaper and I, have you ever had an aluminum handled knife and said this is a great knife. I just I just kind of wish it were titanium. No, you haven't. And if you have, that's only because you're a material snob. Let's face it, aluminum knives are awesome, especially with automatics. There's a reason why there isn't a huge slew of titanium automatics. I'm not sure what that reason is. Probably expense, because automatics are, are already expensive to manufacture. Uh, but I, I love this. Look at this here. Uh, on screen, we see a green anodized. They're going to offer a black anodized as well. But this green, I would have to go for it. It's beautiful. Uh, that 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 Kelly green, it's like you, you need to be out on the links in Scotland with that knife. Very, very nice looking knife. I'm drinking tea. I'm sorry, guys, if I'm off tea. <laughs> Uh, 350 bucks. Like I said, ordinarily, if you were to get one, a titanium one, you'd be putting out 600 bucks, probably a lot more because you'd be getting it now on the secondary market. Uh, but this looks like a good, you know, harbinger of things to come. Uh, I want to see some more affordable. I, can't, I mean, am I calling $350 affordable? That's ridiculous. But from Hinderer Knives, it's less expensive. And that's always nice to see. All right, we're going to we're going to conclude this now and uh, hit up the state of the collection in a moment. Check out some of my latest knife obsessions. Uh, but before we do, uh, make sure you like, you comment, you subscribe and send this show to a friend. It's always greatly appreciated. That said, coming up in a second, let's get to the state of the collection.
The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So, you know, I've been in a slip joint phase lately, and I've been following a bunch of guys. Slip Joint Sawyer is one of them. He's a cool dude from Great Britain. Thrifty Kniffy, also, uh, he's an American, also obsessed with slip joints and collecting. And uh, I've seen the slip joint guys lately, even, even scab of Choir Boys Cutlery. Uh, veering into Victorinox, and um, I did too. I think it's a natural extension of being into slip joints, uh, you know, obviously. Um, <clears throat> but there is so much utility packed into the iconic frame of the Victorinox Swiss Army knives, and this this is me. I don't know if we're all like this. I think we are if we're watching this, but my mind locks onto something like, oh, man, I haven't paid enough attention to Victorinox. They're so cool. Look at all the utility. There's never a quality control problem. You know, you can identify one from thousand miles away. Like this is a great knife. Why do I not? And then I realize I have a bunch of them. So I dig them all out. This is what's been happening. But I got some new ones. And this one was sort of a bridge from the fancy science that I like uh, um, obsessing over collecting and such. And it's the Victorinox Swiss Army One. And um, it is a single bladed Swiss Army knife, but it's in the 93 millimeter size category. So bigger than your standard 91 um, uh, red Celador handled uh, Victorinox. Uh, these ALOX models are either smaller at 84 or larger at 93. Uh, so <laughs> I got this. I, I love this because I have the Pioneer X, which has the same uh, nicely shaped big uh, blade and, and the same 93 millimeter frame. And I really like it, but I rarely carry it because it's a three layer tool and it's a little bit thicker. And this is a single layer tool, very thin and extremely useful. No stop, uh, no half stop. Great action, great snap. I'm going to lower this light. It seems to be bouncing off the ALOX a little hard. There we go. Um, <clears throat> and then you have the logo pressed in there. So just this is this is awesome. So if you're if you're kind of on the fence about slip joints and you don't want to go too deep into it, but you want an excellent version of a slip joint, uh, get this. Get the Swiss Army uh, um, Swiss Army number one from Victorinox because. It's only going to cost you about 21 bucks on Amazon. And you're going to have a lifelong, I mean, this knife will last you forever. The ALOX is super uh, strong and you feel it. It's textured in your hand. It stays there. And before I move from this one, listen to this walk and talk. And listen to that snap. Really, really excellent action. And I have found uh, through unearthing all of my my uh, Victorinox and buying a couple others for slip joints, they are excellent. They all they have amazing action. It's it's only old ones that I've dug up that have sloppy or slow action. Uh, next up is the Victorinox Compact. This one I like a lot. This this has been a a darling of some of the Victorinox collectors and slip joint collectors because of the amount of utility it packs in a, in a small package. It's called the compact, but this is a standard 91 millimeter model. I think they call it compact because it's only a two layer model, but it's got so many different functions. They list it as 15. I see a lot more actually, but let me just go through this real quick. You got a blade. You got this five feature opener. You can you can do a, a cap lifter, wire stripper, actual can opener. You can see a little a little crimp in that. 
it curves a bit so you can cut open a can you got a flat head and you can start a phillips with that if you're interested in going with that angle uh on a half stop and then of course one of the most cherished tools here the large victorinox scissors you've got a pen a pressurized uh, pen barrel here you've got the toothpick which i won't bother showing you you know what that looks like and then here on the on the um corkscrew you also have a mini screwdriver and then you've got the parcel hook back here that has a million uses. This parcel hook is not just a throwaway tool. And then on the back of it, it has a knurled surface for filing your nails. And then it also actually has a pin right in here. A lot of the new Victorinox knives have a little hole for putting a straight pin. And uh, I guess that comes in handy. It hasn't come in handy for me yet. But um, so that's the Victorinox Compact. And for 50 bucks, you get about 17 tools. They list 15. I've counted 17 or 18 uh, different ways you can use that. And then if you go online and you look at some of these Victorinox nerds who are awesome, they have all different ways you can use these knives. Excuse me, that you've never considered. So. And do check that out. Okay. Uh, oh, Victorinox Cadet. This is sort of a footnote here. Uh, you've seen a cadet on this channel before. It's been a few years because I lost my old one. So I got my new one. Um, I wanted to get this because it's a um, 80, 84 millimeter ALOX. It's super useful. I mean, I've, I've always loved the knife anyway. Uh, but this is the one Swiss Army knife, even... Even this single bladed model, I can't do this with, that I can drop this in the pocket and I don't care if it rides horizontally or whatever. It's so thin and so light and just the right length that it doesn't bother me uh, in the pocket. I always have a little fob on it, though. That stops it from moving around too much in the pocket. Okay, last up, oh, this one I've been waiting for. I mean, not that long, but I've waited about a year for this. That's right. Your eyes are not deceiving you. This is the Rosecraft Lusahatchee Jack. Not too much to say about this gorgeous um, clip point, slip joint knife here, but um, it is not a Barlow. You can tell from the from the um, bolster. Barlow bolster would come down lower, um, but it is kind of like a boy's knife in a way, like a large, robust boy's knife you have a deeply descending belly on that on that straight backed clip point i love that that puts the point very low uh even below the level of the handle so you can use that tip in utility cuts very easily without changing the angle of your wrist too much but you still get a belly and you still get this nice straight awesome walk and talk again this one is a modern slip joint so you have that stop pin in there really really great um fit and finish the the uh hafting is great you don't feel the transitions except for the change in materials or texture but you don't actually feel where they meet same thing with the pins and that shield that beautiful rosebud shield which funny funny enough i wonder if anyone else experiences this but oftentimes I will glance at the rosebud shields from these Rosecraft knives in certain light and I'll catch my, my thumbprint or fingerprint on it and the ridges from the fingerprint begin to look like petals of the rose. So beautiful. Life, life is beautiful. All right, so these are my newest knives here. All slip joints, if you notice. Uh, the Rosecraft uh, Lusahatchee Jack. I got the compact from Victorinox right here the cadet from victorinox and the swiss army one um so i'm going to just reiterate if you're kind of like oh this kind of non-locking knife thing is sort of interesting what's up with that victorinox is your entry drug they are your gateway drug because they pack so much utility in there they're very non-threatening people look at this and they're like oh you have a swiss army knife are you traveling europe by URL? at least that's my my generation um but you can get a compact for, or I mean a um uh, a a multi-tooled 
um, cadet here for like 40 bucks, or you can get a compact for 20 bucks and you get all the utility of a slip joint but all of the super high quality of a Victorinox. These things are just awesome. All right, I've waxed poetic about Victorinox long enough. Let us get to a bevy of badass blades. Now, ordinarily, I don't like to use the word badass. In this family, we say bad donkey, but today I'm drinking tea, so I'm feeling extra, extra emboldened. All right, so the first bad donkey knife here. So, okay, what are, what are, what 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 are the qualifications here? So, all of these knives are available. I have a lot of really bad donkey knives over here in this case that are custom that are not available unless you're going to wait or pay maybe a little more money than you wanted to. I'm not saying that these are cheap knives here, but I am saying that they are readily available. Mostly. Okay, first up uh, you know, cyclically, like Emerson knives, this first one, you can't always get any Emerson you want at any given time. And we all know that. Uh, but this is the Elvia. The Emerson Elvia. This is uh, Ernest Emerson's collaboration with Ed Calderon on a Pical style fighter. So that means you, the main way you hold this is tip down, edge in for um, self defense. When all you have left are those caveman motions and that blade and that point here, I'm going to go to the main camera for a second so you can see what those caveman motions are. But like if you're in this kind of uh, um, defensive situation and you can't do all of your cool, intricate Kali stuff, oh, look at me, knife fighting. And you're just, mm -mm. this takes advantage of that arcing blade and that point kind of far out there takes advantage of the arcing motion of your elbow, of your shoulder, and it bites in. And then as you pull back, it's cutting and tearing as you pull out. So we all we all know how bad Pakal knives are. Emerson just took it and turned it extra bad. So you can carry it in your pocket. He gave you an, an extra uh, bit of angle there on it, extra reach out with the point. Um, which which really does uh, maximize a sort of back fist action. So if you're punching with a back fist like this, you don't have to like angle your wrist out to get the point because it's right there. Bang. So it takes very little, I don't want to say it takes very little skill to use this, but it does. It takes very little skill to use this effectively. Um, however, uh, the Libra fighting guys uh, or Libra fighting system uh, by Scott Babb and their and 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 Calderon uh, is a practitioner. It takes a lot of skill. I'm not saying that kind of fighting skill does not take skill. I'm just saying a knife like this or a knife that's coming up, the Black Talon or the Civilian, takes a a very little bit of skill to put to good use if you need it. You know, if you're untrained and you need to defend yourself, this is a great one. This is an aftermarket uh, uh, brass wave. I think, uh, well, they ended up doing a run of it with the wave. I don't know why they ever considered making this most defensive knife without a wave. I think that was a cynical money-making ploy. I love you, Ernest Emerson, but I think that that was, uh, I don't like that. But anyway, I had I got an aftermarket one, and it works just fine by Daniel Louvre. I'm not sure of his name, but he's French or has a French last name, and he makes knives too, and they're really cool. Daniel L O U V R I E R E. Look him up on Instagram. All right. <clears throat> Next up in this bevy of badass blades, folders. We're doing folders and then we're going to graduate into fixed blades. Next folder is the MK Ultra by uh, Knight, uh, made by Fox Knives, designed by Jason Knight. The uh, very famous blacksmith or uh, bladesmith who was a sort of substitute judge for Jay Nielsen on Forged in Fire. He's known for this sort of kukri look. That sort of kukri blade with the big fuller is his thing. Uh, but folders are not his thing. So he uh, designed this uh, initially with Doug Markaida, with the help of Doug Markaida, uh, who got him in, in the door at Fox Knives. Let's let that focus. Got them in the door at Fox Knives, and uh, and this is the second run of them. And now they're on, I believe, their third 
run of these. So you can now, you can just sort of buy these. At first they were very limited and then second release was pretty limited. That was this one. And now I believe they've become um, more available. But this is, to me, uh, this beats the Raja 2 from Cold Steel, which is a great folding kukri. It's a little large. It's a little uh, thick and all that. But to me, this really encapsulates the spirit of kukri with, um, well, definitely with the shape of the blade, with putting the point where it is. Um, you know, makes it a pistol grip, so very easy to stab with. People don't understand that about the Kukri. It is not just a chopper. It is not just a slasher. It's a great thruster. Uh, and then the curved handle here is very evocative of, of the Kukri with the flared pommel there. And the uh, titanium hand. Well, that's not evocative, but... Um, and so just very sharp, very good, uh, well-made knife from Fox. You've got the micarta on the top, the titanium on the back. N690 blade steel is wicked sharp. I mean, this knife gets incredibly sharp. N690 is okay. Uh, uh, and, you know, I'm not a hardcore user, but even I have found that sometimes N690, is, um, you know, maybe takes a little bit more care or or sharpening a little, little quicker. And when I have this, I use it. This this blade is very usable. Uh, of course, this is all about badass fighting knives I'm talking about. But just as an in-the-pocket utility knife, this is four and a quarter inches. But it it feels like it's a three and a half inch knife. It carries and uh, uses like a three and a half inch knife. So uh, it's a big blade, but it's on a nice slender and very stout foundation here that's easy to carry carries like a smaller knife next up uh is the microtech socom i'm sorry <laughs> the microtech ultratech double edge and in my case it's double edge with the serrations which makes it extra badass extra badass now this is only a 3.4 inch blade so even sub three and a half inch blade and uh yet it is uh, something I, I feel very confident carrying if, uh, if, if I feel sketched out. You have a really nice aluminum handle, aluminum frame here. And the jimping that you find in aluminum, Microtex, and Protex, two different companies, but they both use a lot of aluminum. The milling, uh, the jimping in the milling, or the, the milling of the jimping of the aluminum is so sharp. It just grabs your hand, not sharp like painful, but it grabs your thumb. I would, I would easily jam this into a tree or something hard, uh, with no guard, knowing that my my fingers were buried in this jimping. It's just very confidence inspiring. Um, this Ultra Tech in particular is a little stiff, uh, but uh, I'm getting stronger and it's getting weaker. <laughs> So altogether, it's a it's a great combination. Why this, Bob, over over say the um, the uh, arch nemesis for, or uh, I should say, not the arch nemesis. Wish I owned that. Uh, the antimatter from Arcane Design, which is a double edged dagger flipper. And I would say the reason I would choose this is the serrations make it extra bad. So you're going to have longer time with this uh, knife. Say you dull out the M390 on this side. You can flip it over and those serrations will take you a lot further. But also, it's got this pretty gnarly, um, what do you call it, uh, glass breaker that protrudes on this peaked nubbin, if you will. And uh, that, it makes for a great attitude adjuster. Uh, so you could just, you could use this knife as a kubaton as well as a double-edged fighting dagger. So this, that sort of sends it over the edge into the uh, utterly badass category. Bad donkey. Sorry if there are any youngsters watching. Uh, yeah, this is this is a great one. If you ever want a double-edged folder, I would say first place to check is the Ultratech. Next up, from Cold Steel. I mean, this list has... I, I had to be very careful not to put too much cold steel on this list. Uh, so the next one <clears throat> is a cold steel, though. It is the Black Talon II. Uh, this makes a lot of lists of this sort. 
because of that nasty, nasty blade. Okay, so this S curve, recurve, serrated blade, you can get this non serrated, so that's not necessarily a part of it. But uh, this blade is based on the uh, inspired by the Spyderco Civilian and S curve blade of a similar shape, just a way less um, uh, broad design. Uh, the civilian is much more dainty and only wants to come in contact with soft flesh. It does not want to do any EDC work. It does not want to do anything approximating uh, hard use. Uh, but the Black Talon totally could. They just beefed up the blade a little bit, but kept that wicked downward pointed S curve. So uh, let me go back to the Spyderco civilian for a second. That knife was uh, requested by the South African government. Some aspect of the South African government asked Spyderco for a knife that anyone could use without training um, for self-defense. This There was a huge, this was 91, huge spate of rapes happening in Johannesburg and other um, cities. Uh, around South Africa. So this this knife was requested. Kind of a funny thing, but I like it. Uh, <clears throat> that knife did great. It's still in production. But at a certain point, Cold Steel said, hang on, uh, hold my beer. I think I might be able to do this just a little bit better. And in my opinion, they did. I am not besmirching the legacy of the uh, Spider Co. Civilian, but the Black Talon in a pinch, I'd way rather have this. You've got an opening uh, tab here. This this opening, um, what do you call that? Slab or whatever is like a thumb disc, so you can open it easily with the thumb, or as you pull it out of the pocket, it acts as a wave opener, so you can use that and wave it out of your pocket and bring it to bear immediately. So I say this has it over the civilian in a number of ways, and um, that's why that that's why this knife is on this list. Also very thin. Uh, this has been the, my uh, inside breast pocket knife for my winter coat for many years. Oh. Okay, next up, I say many years. Like many years. It's been like five years. It's not. It's not too many. Okay, next up. Bastinelli Knives Dragotac. This is the big Dragotac. I am in love with this knife. 4.75 inches of, in this case, it's D2. This is before they went M390. This is a, a, a inch and three quarters broad, full flat ground blade in that sax shape. You know, shape, it's Warncliffe, sax, whatever you want to call it. To me, on this big knife, I call it a sax because it's it's more of a, it's more of a fighting Viking blade to me. Uh, but you have this extremely ergonomic uh, curved handle. It's about five and a half inches long. That gives you a lot of different places uh, to hold. A lot like a large cold steel. There. There. Of course, you can come back here if you needed to. And, and butt it in the palm. And thrust. And with the shape of the, the curve of the handle, it's still going to put the point right where it needs to be so it acts sort of like a pistol grip this knife also has a very large opening disc which can be used to wave the knife out of your pocket though i think that is just a happy accident made by lion steel knives uh you can see down in here lion steel in italy it has the annoying roto block that's a lion steel quote unquote innovation now it's something that you turn to make sure the lock does not close. Uh, but it turns on its own sometimes. It's a pain in the ass because it'll close up when you're not expecting it. And though it's rare that you need to close your knife really quickly, usually you need to open it really quickly, it can just be a, kind of a, a pain in the tuchus. Now, if you took this and actually took the time to put some um, thread locker there, it would just act as a overtrops, over travel stop for the um for the lock bar this is a great knife they've come out with a, a newer version of this with the contoured g10 handle it's so nice uh and an m390 blade steel it'll cost you a pretty penny no doubt <clears throat> okay next up and last in the folders yes you know what's coming no list is complete without the espada xl the Espada XL by Cold Steel based 
on the uh, modern interpretation of the Spanish Navaja, the fighting, folding, ratcheted, locking knife that was adopted slash perfected after ordinary Spaniards were no longer allowed to carry swords on them to settle their scores. So they all carried these giant folders in their cummerbunds walking around the streets of Sevilla and protecting their honor. Cold Steel has done the world a favor, not a favor, a, a, a service. A, I don't even know how to say it. I'm, I'm just so happy that Cold Steel exists. going to come over here uh, to create this folder because it is so big. It's so light. They have this version, which is all dressed up in shiny G10 and aluminum um, and the shiny uh, blade. This is an older one, so it's hollow ground. Uh, and they have it in G10, and they have it in all black, and they have it in a bunch of different versions now. But the fact that a modern manufacturer, as respected and as, well, good as Cold Steel, that can make stuff that is this hardcore, this stout, this uh, sharp and indestructible, is making this classic knife. It just thrills me. And uh, this is what I said when I had Lynn Thompson on my show, which was one of the one of the uh, shining moments of this show is that he has done for knife junkies such as myself, people like us who love knives and love the history of knives. He's done us such a favor by taking some of these, a lot of these historical knives and making them modern, either through, through folding versions like this or, or just swords, updating classical swords with modern materials and manufacturing. So you cannot put into words how valuable Lynn Thompson, Cold Steel, and the Espada is uh, to knife badassery. So thank you, Lynn Thompson. It's biggin'. All right, so now we go to fixed blades. And uh, here's one. Uh, now, when you get it, you will be able to call this a custom knife. Um, but <clears throat> it's, it's, they're produced in small batches. So it's kind of a production knife, too. Um, but this is from TKL Knives, um, and this is the MR1. Now, you know, I carry the Night Stalker all the time. I carry it even less than, or even more than the MR1. <clears throat> but the Night Stalker is, I mean, the MR1 is the Night Stalker, just um, ground for Pical. So the Night Stalker is a knife that is shaped just like this, but the bevel is where you would expect it on this side, and the edge is on this side. Uh, Tim Kell of TKL Knives got a request from a Marine uh, Army, uh, I'm sorry, a Marine Raider unit in California. I think it's Marine Raider Unit 1 uh, for a small fixed blade Pakal knife to use for room clearing. Uh, if if someone got too close, that kind of thing. Um, knives still get used by some people in a defensive combative way. And then there are people like military veteran Tim Kell, uh, who can make knives just for them, kind of knowing where they're coming from. <clears throat> so why is this on the list and not the Night Stalker? Well, because it's the big call. Because it's, it takes less ability to be deadly with this knife, with the edge on this side, than it does the other. That's, that's what I say. Uh, but also, this is a ringed knife that actually works for me. <clears throat> The ring is in a perfect position to maintain a fist grip without it, without having to change my grip at all. Um, I just did change my grip because my hand is a little short, but um, it fits perfectly on this without having to realign my knuckles, which means you could punch with it, uh, you know, and then cut with it. Um, but the cutting I just did was assuming the edge was on the other side. So I just totally, I'm dead now. Uh, but really, it's that, it's the combination of the ring, which makes it super easy to draw. I carry it on my waist uh, band right up front on the belt uh, like this. And it's so easy for me to just find that ring with the finger and draw it out. And then it has you in Pakal style so you can stab and pull. So... Of the TKL knives, which are all very, very, very pretty, uh, pretty much fit in this category, I would say that the MR1 is at the top. Uh, maybe a close second would be the um, the triple-edged Warncliffe. What is that called? Why am I uh, spacing on that? Uh, 
check it out go to the website you'll find it it is it is really cool uh, the guardian the guardian okay explain spider co ronin that's right the spider co ronin you might not have been expecting this on this list but let me explain to you why uh this knife is definitely a badass knife first of all it is small thin and carryable so at its thickest it's about a half inch um, maybe even a little less let's see if i can get that to focus maybe even a little less on the handle very very thin the bd1 blade steel that comes to that perfect uh perfect for thrusting worn cliff tip is very hollow ground so it's very thin very slicey and sharp and in the hand it fits like a dream so the thing about this that i love the most is that it's so carryable if you're a guy who's interested a guy or gal who's interested in a fixed blade knife for carry for self-defense um this is something to consider now it might be a little longer than you were expecting but the super thinness of it really makes up for it. Um, oftentimes, Thursday Night Knives, uh, I'll do the show here. Um, all of my knives will be out on the table because I'm talking about them, but I'll take this one and put it in my waistband. And it just melts there, and you don't know it's there until you need it, and then you just tug it out, and it's great. But I love it because it's got that Warncliffe straight edge that, that uh, on a swipe or on a slash, uh, keeps constant contact with the material until you pass the tip. But also, what a great thruster! Because if you uh, make a thrusting wound with this, it's gonna make it's gonna wedge out and widen out very quickly, and uh, that's kind of what you want. It's grim. It's a grim topic, uh, but you know if you're if you're stabbing someone, uh, how you stab uh, should have some bearing. It, it has a molded plastic sheath that is about the size of connecticut it's a little too big uh for me uh, but i still use it and i i never have it with tight jeans or anything like that but i don't really wear tight jeans uh so on a looser fitting garment this works fine if you do get the ronin 2 you'll probably make yourself a new sheath or get a new sheath that sheath is a little just a little bit uh too much okay next up uh, this is from one of my favorite uh, knife companies, Spartan Blades, out of North Kakalaki. Uh, this is the Les George designed Marine Raider Dagger. A um, couple of things here. Uh, Spartan Blades is from North Carolina, but like everyone else, they're swimming in the same waters and have some of their manufacturing overseas. This is in Taiwan, not in China. And we know... China and Taiwan both make great, great knives, but we all have a little bit more sympathy or, I don't know, we like Taiwan. <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, based on the very, at the time, uh, Marine Raider Dagger, uh, which was replaced um, pretty quickly by some other knives, uh, the uh, K-Bar being one of them. The Marine Raider Dagger was known for uh, broken tips, for being very, very uh, light, bendable, uh, cheap materials, aluminum handle, because they there was a um, materials crunch uh, during that time of the war, and so they couldn't devote their best materials and engineering <clears throat> to their dagger. Uh, so a lot of guys would 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 knock the tip off and make a sharp chisel tip knowing that the tip was going to come off anyway. And um, so Les George, who is obsessed with daggers, uh, decided to design his version. He's a former Marine. He did uh, uh, ordnance uh, disposal. So like one of those guys, a hurt locker dudes, a courageous man and a great knife maker. And um, he decided to take his swipe at the Marine Raider dagger, made it a little more uh, chunky. But it's definitely not a chunky knife. I mean, it is a light and a facile knife. But, you know, he made some changes to make it lighter. That's an FRN handle. Coke bottle, jimped all the way around. Super grip on this. Um, just an amazing dagger. And there are a lot of amazing daggers out there, but reasonably priced and by guys we love. 
uh, reasonably priced. I think this was, mm, don't quote me. It was under, I think this was like 125 when I got it, but don't quote me. All right, next up, a new one. This this is a new release from Off Grid Knives. They have a lot of badass knives, uh, but this definitely takes the cake. Uh, this is the Cayman XL based on their Cayman EDC, then Cayman Large folders uh, that had that same clip point blade with the very low slung point and the long dramatic swedge. A swashbuckling blade is what I call it because it just looks uh, dramatic. Uh, but here's another one that uh, is inexpensive, but it's it's an inexpensive but very um, effective buoy knife. I say effective because it's in, in D2, so it's in a great steel. I also say effective because it's very broad so that, um, so that uh, saber grind still gets very thin behind the edge like like all off-grid knives. It's wickedly sharp and just glides through material. Like it's not there. I have not tried this on cardboard, but I would imagine like every other awkward knife, it's going to glide through it. Like it's not a great ergonomic handle that really evokes the wonderful folder handle. And, uh, and then a very, very wide blade at the, at the peak of the swedge, which means on a thrust, uh, this is going to, um, you know, it's going to be devastating. So this definitely fits in the badass category. Plus, it's not going to break the bank to get about the size of a K-bar with an awesome folded over taco kydex sheath uh, with, a, with a drop loop that you don't have to take your belt off to use. Or, of course, you could just take this off and put a different carry method on it. Uh, but that is the off-grid knives Cayman XL. Let me get one shot, Jim. Me holding it right here. Ah, it's, it's so cool. It's so dramatic looking. Big fan of this. All right, next up. I mean, this is dramatic. Of course, from Cold Steel. I could pick so many, uh, but I went for this. This is overtly badass. Okay, so this is the Cold Steel Chaos Kukri. Um, Lynn Thompson, of, I'll just keep it here for a minute. Lynn Thompson of Cold Steel is a great big fan of the Kukri for its, for its incredible shearing power, chopping power. It's this curve here, this recurve here. It's the width of the blade. Um, and then combined with the not too thick, what is this, like three, three sixteenths of an inch thick? No. Uh, how thick is this? I'm sorry. It's <laughs> it's uh, oh, five sixteenths. No, no. Three sixteenths of an inch. That's right. Uh, so not too thick. And uh, very broad, so the saber grind gets a very, very slicey. It's super sharp, but of course, really the kukri has all that weight for kukri has all that weight forward. So it's just going to deliver incredible shearing blows. I mean, no doubt you could you could delimb a tree with this. You could delimb lots of things with this. And then, of course, to just to add insult to injury. You've got this uh, very stout um, aluminum, uh, what do you call it? knuckle duster here that is just so, I, I like the look of it and I like the feel of it. Most knuckle dusters separate all four fingers and that can get dicey where we all have different hands, but putting one separation in the middle, great idea. Great idea because everyone's fingers can fit on either side of this. And um <laughs> So uh, Cold Steel makes a bunch of these chaoses. They make a dagger. They make a buoy. Uh, they make a tanto, and they may and they make a, a push dagger, which is ridiculous. Uh, but glad they make it. Um, but of all of them, I would say this is probably the most devastating because that blade is just. It's astonishing what you can uh, the performance you can get out of a kukri plus. It has the attitude adjuster on the very back. If this whole package hasn't done anything, you can also just hit them with the knob on the back. So here it is. It's the chaos kukri. And then I like this. Danger, do not grip here. <laughs> I love that. You will slice your hand if you grip here. Okay, last up. You probably predicted this, but the Puzan Predator Hunter Bowie. 
buy work tough gear. Let me see if this will fit in the camera. Probably not, but there we go. So this one uh, was probably my biggest thrill purchase of, uh, I'm going to come over to this main camera, Jim, uh, biggest main thrill purchase of 2023 um, for a number of reasons. First of all, it was my first work, my first and only work tough gear knife after borrowing scabs for a while and checking them out and knowing that I love them. Uh, these are small batch made in Taiwan uh, and by like five people or they have a very small shop. And uh, so there's some prestige in that, I have to say, because they're limited. Um, the Puzan uh, Bowie line is something I've been very interested in. Lots of uh, maybe three or four different buoys that are really beautiful from Work Tough. Uh, in the Puzan line, but this one based on the Predator knife, you know, the knife they all had in Predator, uh, the one made famous by Billy. Oh, sound familiar? Uh, that's what this is based on. Just look at that blade. Um, took a lot of cues from that. So um, I had to have this in my collection. And then with this handle, everything about this knife is appealing to me in terms of looks. Uh, but the handle really has a great feel to it you got a coke bottle swell you've got the horse hoof pommel here holding you in there and uh and uh as long as you're eating your wheaties and lifting your weights it it's nothing in hand so uh the puzon predator hunter buoy i'm gonna put this down here um probably the king of the badass knives this year though all of these have their uh their strong points Thank you for joining me on this little journey through this bevy of badass blades. Let me know what your favorite badass blades are. What do I have in my collection that you might know about that I didn't add that should be in here? Like maybe the, like this, but that's not readily available. I wanted things that people could, uh, with some um, reasonable expectation, go out and purchase if they, if they were inspired. So tell me uh, what knives you like for self-defense, what knives you like for badassery, what knives just inspire that aggressive spirit. I'm Bob DeMarco talking for uh, Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, reminding you to check us out on Thursday Night Knives tomorrow night on the Sunday interview show. Uh, we're back in. 2024 is rolling and uh, can't wait to see where we go. All right. I'm Bob DeMarco. Jim is working his magic behind the switcher saying take care. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.